Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. And I'm Tracy McRae. Your immune system fights invaders such as germs throughout your body. Your immune system should also recognize cancer cells as abnormal, but it doesn't always do so. Cancer cells can develop an ability to hide from the immune system, or they can disable or in inhibit the immune system from acting. Tricky cancer cells, aren't they? Yeah, very. The goal of immunotherapy for cancer is to induce your immune system to recognize and kill those cancer cells. In the last few decades, immunotherapy has become an important part of treating some types of cancer, and promising clinical trials are underway to test these new therapies. Here to discuss immunotherapy is Mayo Clinic immunologist Dr. Keith Knutson. Welcome to the Knu <laughs> welcome, Dr. Knutson, to the program. It's nice to meet you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. Who ch who decided that you should come up from Florida in uh, January? What's that all about? Well, I originally was uh, stationed here in in Rochester, and I still have family here, ah. and so I come back every once in a while, even though it's cold. Sometimes in the winter. Yes. Gotcha. So. Um, we have 170 stations all around the country, and so not everybody um, knows exactly what immunotherapy is. Can you please explain it for us? Well, it, the immune system is uh, quite complex, and, and uh, but I think you can, you know, uh, really try to understand it in the sense of the vaccines that we use for the prevention of infectious diseases. So we all get a vaccine or, or multiple vaccines at some point in our life, depending on where you're from, different kinds of vaccines that would protect us from exposure. And the reason that we do that is because it takes a long time for the immune system to develop what it needs to specifically attack something. So for example, it takes on the order of anywhere from three weeks to four weeks to develop an immune response against the flu. For a lot of these organisms, they can, they can act much more rapidly in that and mm. cause illness. Mm -hmm. And when they do cause illness, that suppresses the immune system. So we need to act by giving vaccines. And that helps really recapitulate or and more or less create that first infection. And once you had that first infection, then you're protected from subsequent infections. So we essentially give the first infection with a vaccine, which tends to be a much attenuated form of whatever virus. What does that mean? Bacteria. Smaller version? Tenu attenuated in the sense that it's not as pathologic. It doesn't, it's not as disease causing. Okay. So, but it's enough to stimulate the immune system. And then once the immune system is stimulated, it can provide protection for months, years, decades. So Dr. Knudsen, you, you talked about the attenuated vaccines. Now, are these live vaccines or are they dead vaccines? Can you tell us the difference? There's a mix of both. And so we use uh, many, in, for many vaccines, we use attenuated forms of microorganisms. So mm -hmm. they are living and they do cause infection, but the infection doesn't cause the same kind of disease. In fact, it's often subclinical. We don't see it in the clinic. But it's enough of an infection or it resembles enough of what would cause a disease to stimulate the immune system. And th there's also fragments or heat killed or killed in some other way microbes that can be used as, as vaccines as well and they stimulate the immune system so that works when it comes to mumps or chicken pox or fill in the blank but why is it that cancer tricks the immune system how does cancer get around that well so think about it like this you have this very powerful system in your body that can kill microbes, prevent diseases, eradicate, you know, all kinds of different uh, microorganisms that are in the env environment. You need to have ways of protecting yourself from that immune system. So your body has developed or evolved over time ways of protecting itself from its own immune system. So typically you don't have problems with your immune system attacking you. Some people do. In type 1 diabetes, for example, which is insulin-dependent diabetes, or in autoimmune diseases uh, such as rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or something like that, that, those mechanisms which prevent the immune system from attacking yourself are somehow subverted. Mm -hmm. So we have all of these genes in our body that allow us to, to block the immune system from attacking us. And the cancers are really good at finding those mm -hmm. and, and turning them on. 
So then what's the the difference for between vaccination and an immune therapy? Is immune therapy specifically guarded to treat cancers and vaccination is to prevent infection? So Right. So that's been the traditional sense that we give a vaccine to prevent the development sure. of a disease. So more recently, vaccines have now become useful in the therapeutic setting. So after one's gotten the disease and it allows the body to recognize what we call antigens or parts of whatever the disease is. And we oftentimes use these vaccines in individuals along with something else that would help us block those suppressive mechanisms that I was telling you, okay? okay. So using vaccines in combination with something that kind of reverts, reverses this ability of tumor cells or infections to block the immune system is very useful in the therapeutic setting for reducing the severity of disease. So is immunotherapy the same thing as vaccine therapy? Like we've talked about using the measles vaccine against a tumor. Exactly. Is that the same thing? It's, so vaccine therapy is a subset of therapies that belong in this more global category, immunotherapy. Okay. There's different types of immunotherapies. We've made tremendous progress over the last three decades at implementing many of these different kinds of immunotherapies, and some of them are vaccines, mm -hmm. and some of them are other ways of stimulating the immune system that are different than vaccines. Does chemotherapy stimulate the immune system? Chemotherapy can stimulate the immune system in some ways. It depends on the chemotherapy. So a lot of chemotherapies, as m many people know, are very toxic. And the, w the reason that they're toxic is they kill growing cells. Cancers are composed of a ball of growing cells. And so a lot of chemotherapies rely on this growth in order to kill the, the cancer cells. Well, the, the um, immune system can recognize dying cells, okay? Mm -hmm. So in some ways, in, with some chemotherapies, they have been useful in co combination mm. with immunotherapies by s helping stimulate the immune system. But the problem is that chemotherapies kill dividing cells. And guess what? The immune system has to divide too. So oftentimes when you use chemotherapy, it blocks the immune system at the same time that it blocks the tumor growth. And so you don't get the benefit all the time of an activated immune response against your tumor when you use chemotherapy. Is there a way to make a new form of chemotherapy that wouldn't do that or is then then it's not called chemotherapy anymore? That's right. I mean, you know, you could there are there are now investigations trying to specifically target the chemotherapy only to the cancer cells and not to the immune mm -hmm. cells. And that's the way that we think we're it's going to be useful in the future. So, for example, at Mayo, we are developing a range of various what we call nanoparticles, mm -hmm. which is a new technology that has emerged over the past uh, several years. And these nanoparticles can be targeted specifically the t to the tumor. And so you can load chemotherapy onto these nanoparticles. Mm. They can go to the tumor and specifically kill the tumor. So that will decrease the side effects? Um, and that would decrease the side effects. Okay. Because the side effects are typically due to the chemotherapy acting on some normal sure. function in the body that you don't want to be inhibited. So when you're thinking about the use of immunotherapy, what sort of patients are you you're targeting? We target all kinds of cancers with immunotherapy, and we target all kinds clinical settings. And what I mean by that is there may be patients that have a tumor that's stubborn and won't go away. And so that would, that would be a, what we call the therapeutic setting. We also use vaccines in the prevention setting too. So a good many patients have early stage disease, so stage one, stage two cancers. And we can go in and we can successfully remove the bulk of the tumor. But it's likely that in many of these cases, a tumor cell or two has gotten out and has been floating around in the body. And maybe it's going to sit there for a couple of years before it decides to grow again. So we can use vaccines, for example, and other immune-based therapies to prevent disease recurrence, too, by stimulating the immune system. And that's in much the same way that we would do for 
for an infectious disease vaccine mm-hmm. where we stimulate the immune system while the disease is not present. Okay. And then once it starts to come back, you have a ramped up immune system. And in fact, those are some of the studies that we're doing personally in, in my laboratory is uh, identifying vaccine approaches that can be given to patients after they're done with chemotherapy, when they're healthy, to stimulate their immune system. Because we know that having a, an appropriately functioning immune system that can target the tumor is helpful in preventing recurrence. Huh. Well, we're learning about immunotherapy from Mayo Clinic researcher and immunologist, Dr. Keith Knutson. Are you all up to speed here, Dr. Kakar? Sure. Okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to take a little break and see if I can keep up with you guys. Yeah. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to learn about current vaccine clinical trials for breast cancer and discuss exciting new research that includes ovarian cancer as well. You're listening to Mayo Clinic Radio on the Mayo Clinic News Network. Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. And I'm Tracy McRae. We're talking about immunotherapy with Mayo Clinic immunologist, Dr. Keith Knutson. It It is fascinating, and we need now to turn our attention to the research that you're doing and putting that research into action. So tell me about some of the projects that you're involved in. Right. So this is a very exciting time for immunology and immunotherapy in general. It's made such an impact, and and, uh, I've been at Mayo now for about 10 years, and, and they have... Uh, led the way in many in many respects with uh, the development of, of immunotherapy, and one of the things that we've been studying at uh, uh, in Rochester and in Jacksonville is the development of vaccines to prevent breast and ovarian cancer. Mm. So big uh, cause of death in women, lots of cases every year, a very high you know social and economic burden for us both of these diseases. And we would like to prevent those diseases. And there's a couple of ways to prevent them. We could, we could prevent them at the primary level. So what I mean by that is before they occur. Mm-hmm. Or we can prevent them from coming back. Because most breast cancers, the individuals, the, the patients that are uh, being treated have identified their cancer early through mammograms or through you know, regular screening strategies. And we can remove them. Uh, oftentimes, however we don't get all the tumor cells for whatever reason. They get out, they get into other parts of the body. So our goal is to identify what we can target on those cancer cells. What is the immune system going to see? Once we identify that, then we can play, you know, some games with molecules and cells and everything and try to make a vaccine and, and give that back to the patient. So we're working hard by identifying those targets and moving those into the clinic. We have about three minutes left, so I want you to discuss the two um, two of the current uh, breast cancer clinical trials, starting with the triple negative breast sure, cancer one. Sure. We have uh, a number of clinical trials and, and uh, that we've been fortunate to get up and running over the, the past uh, uh, 10 years or so. Uh, two current trials uh, are very interesting to us, and uh, we're right in the middle of these trials for breast cancer. The first one's in triple negative breast cancer. We've identified a target which we think is uh, appropriate for uh, developing a vaccine to prevent tri- triple negative breast cancer. It causes um, uh, triple negative breast cancer is diagnosed in about 20% of all breast cancer patients. It's a sub form of uh, uh, breast cancer. Very aggressive. We're developing a vaccine. We've already conducted a phase one clinical trial uh, to determine if it's safety determined that if, if it's safe and, and we found it to be safe and effective at stimulating the immune system. So we are now conducting a phase two clinical trial. That's the second phase. Mm-hmm. The question we want to address in the, in the phase two clinical trial, does, does it do what we think it should do? What, that, what do you mean by triple negative? So triple negative breast cancer. So breast cancer, there's about 240,000 cases of breast cancer per year. About 20% of those have this unique molecular profile, so to speak, okay? And they are classified as what we call triple negative in that they don't express this molecule HER2 nu, which is associated with another form of breast cancer, and the estrogen and progesterone receptors, which are associated with uh, Mm estrogen-positive breast cancer, the the leading uh, breast cancer. So triple negative is an unmet need because we just don't have any therapies. It's 20% of the breast cancer patients. We've developed a vaccine 
that is going into phase two clinical trials. So the Mayo Clinic is arranging uh, women and men with triple negative breast cancer. It's mostly women, but men do get breast cancer as well to participate in the study. And about two thirds will get the vaccine. So it's a very well-designed study in that most people get the vaccine. And then we're going to wait and see after wow. five years. And we're going to look at, and we hope, of course, or else we wouldn't be doing sure. it, that it's going to prevent recurrence. Recurrence is the leading cause of death in triple negative breast mm-hmm. cancer. Okay. So if it recurs, mm. that it usually recurs away from the breast in, in some other tissue. And once that happens, that's called metastatic disease. And everybody knows that metastatic disease is uh, fairly deadly, uniformly deadly. And so our clinical trial is in 290 patients. Two-thirds of those will receive the vaccine. The second clinical trial is in another fraction of breast cancer patients called HER2 new positive breast cancer patients. And that's an early trial. And that's where we're going to start to ask the question of can we prevent disease? So individuals that have been diagnosed with a pre-malignant condition, DCIS or ductal carcinoma in situ, which isn't quite cancer yet, will be given a vaccine. We know that they have a certain rate of developing. And so we're in the early phases of testing a vaccine to prevent the development of HER2-new breast cancer if you've been diagnosed with a pre-malignant a precursor of breast cancer, so to speak. So that's in the safety testing phase right now, phase one. In the last 30 seconds, what is on the horizon in research? So there is, so what's on the horizon? So we have these vaccines. We have a wide variety of other modalities that are used to stimulate the immune system. What happens if we come in with vaccines plus these other modalities to really amp up the immune system? That's the question we're going to ask. So maybe some of these patients that have resistant disease, bulky disease, disease that's causing them a lot of problems will have a chance by us maximizing the immune response against their cancers. It's exciting. Very. very. (laughs) Thanks, Dr. Knudsen, for joining us. We've been uh, talking about immunotherapy research and clinical trials with Dr. Keith Knudsen. He's an immunologist at Mayo Clinic.